Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is another beauty roundup. So these are speed reviews of beauty products that I've been testing behind the scenes, but that haven't found their way into a dedicated video or an Instagram review where I do share a lot of review and try on content as well. Today's roundup is definitely skincare heavy. I've done quite a few recent trying new makeup videos that I will link below, as well as everything I discuss here today. So I've got mostly skincare, some hair care, some body care, and a couple of makeup bits. So starting with skincare, I have to talk about two products that have impressed me probably the most. So I've got these two items from Do Skincare. It's D-I-E-U-X, like the French Do. And let's talk about this first. So this is the Deliverance Serum. It is a hydrating gel-like texture that contains CBD as well as niacinamide and also a blend of peptides to target firmness and the appearance of fine lines. This is so calming for my skin. The first time I tried this, I was actually traveling and I wanted a multitasker with peptides, antioxidants, brighteners, and I just wanted to travel with one serum. So I brought this, it was a bit of a leap of faith and it really paid off because the morning after I first used this, I woke up with such even toned, bright, calm skin, which never happens after traveling, you know? So it comes in a little pump. This is the packaging, it's very chic, and I don't even wanna use that much because I don't wanna waste it. So it's kind of this like milky fluid serum, and it sinks in really quickly. There's no fragrance, and it's hydrating, it's a light fluid layer. It's not going to give you emollients or anything like that. It's just a nice step in your skincare routine that's also a multitasker. It sinks in really quickly and most importantly, it gives me visible results. And I can always tell when I've used this in my routine and when I haven't now that I've had it in my routine pretty consistently. So Do Skin has a very edited curation of products. They're a newer brand, I think they launched maybe two years ago. And so their other skincare product is the Instant Angel Rich Lipid Rich Moisturizer. So this is described as your skin's barrier protector, deeply moisturizing this hydrating and nourishing face cream supports and repairs skin while giving you an ethereal glow. And I have to agree, this is super barrier supporting. It's rich, but it's not greasy. Like I have combo skin and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It just feels like it gives you this incredible bouncy protection on the skin. So this is an aluminum tube. This is what the cream looks like. It's really nourishing, very elegant. It's got this beautiful spreadability on the skin. And even though it's rich, it again, it doesn't clog my pores. It doesn't feel heavy. It just feels like my skin is stronger, bouncier, more even toned. I like this best in the evening, but it's also great during the daytime. I actually used it this morning, just a little bit less of it than I would use in the PM. And I feel like my skin looks nice. It doesn't look too shiny, too oily or anything like that. So it's also beautiful. It's great for sensitive skin and no fragrance added, all of that good stuff. Their other product in their line, um, this is not new, but I just had it on hand, is their reusable eye patches, which I've discussed before. These are silicone eye patches, so there's no like product in them, but they're meant to be layered over an eye cream or an eye gel to prevent product evaporation, and they're reusable. You can just wash them, dry them, and use them again. So I think they've been really thoughtful about their product releases, about formulating products that work for a large range of skin types that are multitaskers and that are also really efficacious. This next product is also something else that wowed me right away. Um, I was at Coachella this last weekend, hence why my voice is pretty hoarse, you can probably tell. And I brought with me the Dr. Loretta Intense Replenishing Serum. Um, I actually had a travel size of this, just like a little sample size, which is why I brought it with me while I was traveling. Not thinking much of it, I just thought it was going to be like a hydrating serum but it turns out to be much, much more. And it saved my skin in the desert 
and I think dry skins will love this, but also combo skins will appreciate it too, which is what I am. So what strikes me most about this is the texture. It comes in a glass dropper bottle and it has this really interesting, very thick, viscous texture. It's almost like an oil. It's almost like an oil meets a really thick gel, but even though it's thick, it almost feels like it's going to be greasy. And then it just sinks into the skin and it makes the skin really smooth and really like dewy and plump and hydrated. It's going to look shiny for a little while, but it creates this like really protective barrier over the skin that for me, especially being out in the desert in super dry conditions, seemed to create a protective seal over the skin. I applied this over my hydrating serums and under my moisturizer, and I think it really did lock in hydration and moisture and prevented that drying out feeling on the skin. And I've used it, you know, since I've been home too, and I've really enjoyed it. I even used it a little bit this morning um, during the day to see if it would smooth out my skin, and I'm really happy with the way that my skin looks today. And even though it feels like an oil, it doesn't stay oily on the skin. It actually seems to sink in. Like even in that time that I've been talking, the shine has gone down um, visibly on the skin because my hand has absorbed it. So I think if you have a damaged barrier, if you're focusing on supporting your skin while using actives, if you have dry skin, even if you have combo skin, um, this is going to be incredible like it it just does something really special and really noticeable right away so this contains bioidentical skin lipids antioxidant lipochromin don't know what that is but it's an antioxidant linoleic acid and these all work to protect the skin and the skin barrier there's also no fragrance added so i think this would be great um, for sensitive skins as well the next product is not a new to me product, but it's new in my rotation after not having used it for a while. I have the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic, the classic, the gold standard of L Ascorbic Vitamin C serums. It really is, it stands the test of time. It provides antioxidant protection, it brightens, it evens the skin tone, it sinks in quickly, it doesn't leave me greasy, and it just, is the best of the best. And there are a lot of vitamin C serums that I love and recommend all the time. Um, I'm just reminded that SkinCeuticals remains top of the line, best of the best, super effective, and they have the testing and the science to really back up this formula. Next up, I've got the Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patch. This is not a new product on the market, but it's my first time trying it. I have been a CosRx Acne Patch loyalist for like eight years. They were the first brand I tried. I think they're excellent, but I think I found something better that's converting me. Um, so the Mighty Patch is just a classic silicone acne patch. They help suck up any gunk from any active blemishes. They also help protect the skin with any open acne wounds and they help with healing. They expedite healing um, even after, let's say like you've sucked the gunk out. I find that even if you keep a patch on, the overall healing is a lot better, especially if you struggle with like post acne pigmentation. What makes this patch stand out over others that I've tried is that it's super, super sticky and super durable. For example, the Cause RX one as well as a few other ones that I've tried, you have to apply them over dry skin. Like completely dry skin, if you apply them over any skincare, they will slide around. And over dry skin, they'll work really well, but over any skincare, slightly damp skin, you risk, yeah, having them slide around or fall off. These patches really stick. And they even, I mean, you shouldn't apply them over skincare, but even over skincare, they stick really, really well throughout the whole day and they have really strong grip. So even though they don't have any like 
glue or skincare in them. They're still just a hydrocolloid patch. They are really high quality and so they stay exactly where you put them all day or all night, even if you happen to put them over skincare if you forgot to apply them earlier in your routine. So I'm really happy I have these and I think I'm going to stick with these from now on. Next, I have the Audacite Le Bleu Balm, and this is a stiff balm that comes in this beautiful glass jar, and you scrape a little bit out and dissolve it so that it turns into an oil, which it does like instantly. It's the most beautiful color I've ever seen. Like, it's ethereal, it doesn't look real. It's a little bit melty right now because it's kind of warm in this room. I'm under studio lights, but it is a beautiful blend of botanical oils. It smells most strongly of chamomile, but it also includes um, shea butter as well as squalane, shea butter, hemp, jojoba, almond oils, as well as other botanical extracts. So if you are sensitive to botanicals or essential oils, which some people are, um, I would avoid this, but if you're not, this is definitely an experiential product. Um, it is fragrant. I really like that, that's part of the experience. And this is a balm that you can use on your face, on your body, on your cuticles, on your hands. I've actually used it even more on my hands and cuticles than I think I have on my face. So it's just very much a multi-purpose kind of balm. And I think if you are someone that likes botanicals in your beauty products and you like the experience and the scent the scent experience the olfactory experience of beauty you will really enjoy this and it's just super stunning and beautiful to look at i also um, use this around my nose i had a runny nose this weekend and i was blowing my nose a lot and you know when your nose gets really raw and kind of chapped and it starts to peel i use this around my nose and i found it to be really healing so just a beautiful multitasker product and for the last skincare item, I actually have another balm, but it's a quite different formula. So this is the Make Beauty Pink Matter Multi-Use Balm. It comes in this beautiful glass jar. It has this iridescent pink packaging, and it's also a solid balm. So I have been using this um, at night, actually, as my lip mask because I ran out of my Laneige lip sleeping mask. So this is described as a multi-benefit balm that envelops lips with a layer of rich, long-lasting nourishment. It can also be used on dry patches, cuticles, or on tops of the cheekbones for a subtle highlight. It contains sunflower seed wax, mango seed butter, as well as sunflower seed wax, sweet almond oil, and a little bit of peppermint oil. It does have a super, super subtle mintiness, um, but it dissipates really quickly. I'm quite sensitive to like menthol in my products. I don't love it. And I find to, this to be super subtle. Like I don't really even notice it. I have found that I like this best for my lips. Um, it's a little bit thicker and it stays more of a balm consistency. Whereas the Audacite, for example, melts down instantly into an oil. This stays balmy and thick and occlusive and protective over the lips. It's not quite as moisturizing as the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, but it is more protective. So I think if, especially you're, you have like chapped lips from the elements, if you're in harsh climates, in the desert, in the winter, um, this is more protective and it really grips and sticks to the lips overall. I also just really like the packaging. It's this like heavy jar packaging and I've been really enjoying it as my lip sleeping mask. Moving into body products, I last week ran out of two Necessaire body washes and my Necessaire shampoo at the same time. It was very tragic, a very sad week, but I was able to replace the Necessaire body washes with the Grown Alchemist body cleanser and it has notes of chamomile, bergamot, and rose. This body gel, body cleanser, smells incredible. It's a super tart, green, fresh scent. I find the strongest notes to be of bergamot, actually. 
Um, though it does have the floral qualities of chamomile and rose, they're more in the background and it's more of like a citrusy, tart, green fragrance for me. I don't necessarily love rose on its own. I find it to be the most subtle note in here though. And so it's just this really like fresh, zesty, like energizing kind of scent. It's also huge. This bottle is 16.9 fluid ounces and it has a really nice lather. It gets nice and sudsy, but it also contains a lot of plant oils that help moisturize the skin as you're cleansing. So it's not the kind of cleanser that's going to leave your body feeling really stripped and dry and tight as you get out of the shower. It actually um, nourishes and hydrates the skin while you're cleansing. So it's just been really beautiful. Like it makes me feel like I'm at a fancy spa when I use this. And it has that very sleek, like minimalistic branding. Um, that also feels kind of like a spa. And of course I love a pump bottle. It just makes it really easy to use when you're in the shower. So this has been like such a home run for me. I would love this in a hand soap. I'm thinking about grabbing that for around the house in our bathrooms. It's just been beautiful. And I would love this in a perfume. I don't actually know if they have it in a perfume, but if they do, I would totally buy it because it's a very me kind of scent, that fresh, green, citrusy, bright, zesty, but not sweet, just a refreshing scent. I recently received in PR and opened up the Bosha Sika Soothing Universal Cream. So this is described as a lightweight gel cream that helps to hydrate and replenish dry, sensitive skin. By combining skin soothing Sika, lactobacillus, and ginger root extract with nourishing ceramides, skin is shielded from water loss and left silkier than ever. Gentle enough for the face, body, and everything in between. I've not used this on my face, but I have really enjoyed using this in general. So I was really curious what a gel cream body lotion would feel like, and it's actually not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be a kind of lightweight, sinks in quickly, almost like a serum-like texture. And much to my surprise, it's actually more of like a balmy texture. So it looks like that. And then it has this, I mean, it's definitely a gel, but it has a really nice moisturizing quality that seems to seal over the skin. And it creates this like long lasting protective layer over the skin, but it also sinks in quickly. It doesn't feel greasy on the skin and it doesn't um, take a long time to sink in before I can get dressed, for example. The one thing that surprised me is that this is scented and the scent can linger. I like the scent. It's a very fresh botanical scent because it comes from orange peel oil, lavender oil, clove oil, and that ginger root extract. So it has that green botanical fresh scent. Um, but I think when you think of Sika and soothing, you don't really think of fragrance. Like I thought this was going to be more of like a fragrance-free, sensitive skin friendly, like Sika soothing body product. And it's turned out to be a little bit more fragrant and more of like a fragrance experience than I expected. The other thing is that it's, I'm running through it really quickly. So it's 3.4 fluid ounces. And I would say in the last, I don't know, 10 days or so, I've already used a good amount of it, maybe like 40%. And that's with scaling back. Like I haven't used it every single day because I realized I was going through it really quickly. I think something about this texture makes me use a lot of it. And also the fact that it's not in a pump. So with a pump, you're getting a more regulated use every single time. Whereas in a squeezy tube, every, time you use it, you get a different amount. And sometimes I'm finding that I use a lot more than I need to, um, which is fine. It doesn't, it doesn't get greasy or anything like that, but I am running through it relatively quickly. So I know a lot of people were curious about this because of the gel cream texture. It's beautiful, hydrating, long lasting moisture, but it does have a notable scent. So let's talk about hair real quick. I have a new hair tool that I have used a couple of times and I like it, but it's not an instant home run. So this is the T3 um, Luxe 
hair hot rollers. Um, I'll put the full name in the description below. I did film an IG reel showing how I use this, the review. These are um, like the classic hot rollers, but elevated because it's T3 and the experience is really nice. So they come with their own carrying case. It's this like nice faux leather. And then it comes with a set of eight clips and eight hot rollers, and you just plug this into the wall. And these have a ceramic center, and then they have this like velvet coating, and they're rubberized at the end so you can grip them. I think the biggest ones are two inches or maybe 1.35 inches, and I think these are one and a half. So you get four of the small ones and four of the big ones. So I have not used hot rollers in like 20 years probably. I feel like my mom used to put them in my hair when I would have like a piano recital or like a dance performance or something, but I have not used them like of my own volition as an adult person. So it took me a little bit of time to get the hang of putting the rollers in my hair. And I have long hair, it's very thick. I have a lot of hair. Um, I didn't feel like eight rollers was quite enough to get all of my hair in. You can purchase additional rollers separately and you can also purchase rollers of different sizes separately. That's something that T3 always does really well, even with their um, curling wands and curling irons, you can buy detachable um, attachments and customize the size, the barrel size, all of that. Once I got the hang of it, I did really like the effect that these rollers gave me. They gave me that really bouncy, voluminous, um, like classic blowout kind of look, which I think is really nice if you have a special event or if you want to look sleek and look nice and put together. And I also really like the idea of putting rollers in your hair, leaving them to set for 10 to 20 minutes, doing your makeup in that time, and then just taking them out. I think this is a really nice product. I think T3 tools are excellent all around. It's more that the rollers have a really specific demographic. Someone with straight to wavy hair. So like if you have curly hair, these are not gonna be hot enough to straighten out your curls and then create a different curl altogether. And also someone who is willing to put in the time to learn how to use the curlers. I consider myself pretty well versed in terms of doing my own hair and hairstyling. I mean, I don't have a huge variation of looks that I do, but I think I can follow along with tutorials and things pretty well. And it did take me like 20 minutes or so to really figure out how to get my hair into these. And one thing I did struggle with and still struggle with is that I have very layered hair. So I struggled with getting all of my hair and all of the different ends, like the textured ends into the roller in a smooth way without having little bits like splaying out. So I didn't really mind that. I was able to correct that and figure out how to roll them for the most part. It's just something to note, if you're maybe not the best or the most advanced at doing your own hair, you might struggle with this. I have not found myself picking up the rollers that much, but I think that might be because I'm so stuck in my ways. I love my T3 curling iron, and that's what I use today. I'm able to get that look really quickly, but I think with more practice, I will get a lot of use out of this. It's more that I need to get used to having hot rollers as a hairstyling option in my life and have that be like top of mind. I also found that the bouncy look lasted really well for a day into the next day, um, but by the third day, the bouncy look was pretty much gone. So that may vary depending, depending on your hair type. My hair type generally tends to hold a curl really well, um, so it may not last as long for you. It's just something you're going to have to experiment with, I think. So I've just got a couple of makeup products to close things out, um, including two lip products. So the first are the new Revlon Colorstay Matte Light Crayons. So these are lip crayons. They come in, I think, 12 shades. They're high pigment, 
but they're very modern. They're like a modern velvety blur matte lip crayon. I really like the variety of nude shades for many different skin tones and kind of my lips but better shades. So for example, this one does not have a color name on it, but I think it's like the lightest brown toned nude. Um, I'll swatch it for you. It's really silky and goes on so easily. And even though it's matte, it's that really creamy, velvety, again, velvety blur, like slippy kind of matte lip pencil. And I really like a lip pencil for ease of application. It kind of gives you that lip liner and lip look in one. They've also got like more mauve shades. I'm sorry, I don't have shade names for these, but they just glide on so easily. Here's another brown toned nude. Like you can see how silky smooth they are. So even though they are a matte formula, they're really creamy going on and they're super comfortable on the lips. It's kind of like that K-Beauty Velvet Matte lip formula that's come to the US drugstore finally and it feels really elevated and sophisticated and comfortable on the lips. I haven't tried a red lip in this formula, but I think it would be a great formula to wear for a red lip because it is A, so comfortable and so pigmented and so smooth, but um, also long lasting. See, so pretty, super bright, great shade curation. The other lip products that I wanna mention are also an affordable option. So these are the ColourPop Luxe Lip Oils. I think I've discussed these before, but I have a new shade that I've really been liking. It's called Hot Shot, and it's this kind of warmer, warm-toned, like rosy brown tone shade. For me, it's like a My Lips But Better shade. It's very lightly tinted. But I think this formula is really nice. If you like a moisturizing lip formula with a bit of shine, a little bit of tint, this is the kind of product that I can easily wear with or without makeup. And it's so moisturizing that I have found myself reaching for it even when I just need like a lip balm. I have reached for this like in the evening if I'm not wearing makeup but I need something on my lips. These have been really nourishing and they come in a bunch of different shades. I also have um, like a bright coral shade that's been really fun. They're just easy to wear lip products. You can totally throw these in your purse and apply them anytime. They do have a slight a slightly fruity scent but it's not a very strong scent at all and it definitely goes away really quickly. I mean I hardly notice the scent. And the last two products are not the most exciting, but they're workhorse products in a makeup routine. So I finally tried the iconic Shuamura um, brow pencil. This is called the Hard Formula Brow Pencil in the shade Seal Brown 02. I'm wearing it today over um, a clear brow gel. And this has a cult following. It's very popular in Asia. And it's a really hard, very hard, and softly pigmented brow pencil. So it looks like this. The shade Seal Brown is perfect on me. It's very, very cool toned. And you can use the sharp point to create like more brow-like strokes, but I find that it actually is nice for creating more of like a shadow in your brows. So nothing too detailed like a brow pen, for example, like an inky brow pen, but rather creating like the shadow, a very realistic shadow in your brow, if that makes sense. I did use it to create some brow-like strokes today and it worked well for that. Um, but I just think this shade is so nice for um, my skin tone and my hair tone because it's very, very cool toned. It's almost like an ash brown. And because it is so hard and dense, um, you have to work really hard to mess up. It's very mistake proof, it's easy to use, and it goes on really gradually, but once you get the hang of it, um, it also makes for a really quick brow. So definitely something that I'm happy to have tried. Mine is in a limited edition packaging. It's like their Hello Kitty packaging, but this is part of their permanent collection and I really, really like it. 
And the last item is for my fellow oily skin people out there. This is the Pure Cosmetics Matte Mist Anti-Pollution Mattifying Setting Spray. This is not for everyone. This is for if you, like me, get really oily in the summer and your makeup starts to break up no matter what you do, no matter how much you powder it. Um, I used this, again, this last weekend at Coachella. I just grabbed this because I needed a setting spray. I think this came in a set, but it comes in a larger size, um, and I needed a travel size. So I grabbed it, and it kept my makeup locked in all day long. If anything, it was like, so mattifying that I didn't need to apply that much. I didn't think about the fact that I was going to be in the desert and I didn't need to apply it that much. But in LA, in like normal, more temperate conditions, it's great for locking in makeup for long days. If you're wearing a mask, if you are sweaty, if you are going to an event and you need that makeup really, really locked in, this is a great option. The one critique I have of this is that the sprayer is a little aggressive. You do get a nice like fanned out dispersion of the mist, but it comes out really strong and really fast. Um, so it's a little aggressive on the face. So just something to note, I find that this worked best when I actually like sprayed it into the air above my face and then like let it fall down. Or if I walked through it, if I like sprayed it and I walked through it, the way you do with like perfume or something. So that is it for this beauty roundup. I've obviously been testing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. I try to incorporate as much of it as I can into dedicated videos and reviews and Instagram reviews and things like that, but I don't always get around to it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I will link my last beauty roundup below as well if you're curious about that, if you want some speed reviews of things, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.